hi everyone. I hope you all have had a great week and I welcome all of you to our weekly communities of practice Sunday check-in session, a half hour of Dharma, reflection and community connections. If you are a new member of our community, please accept our wholehearted welcome to you. If you have any questions regarding our practices and topics, we are all here to help. So it is customary for people in Australia to begin any meetings by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. I would like to start today by acknowledging the Darwo people as the traditional owners of the land on which Nantian Institutes reside. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lines on which you all are, and I pay my respects to the elders in the past, present, and emerging. The check-in sessions have been developed by our community of practice team and the entire community. The purpose of the session is to develop a reflective play, a reflective practice in response to changes. Guided by humanistic Buddhism, we would like to cultivate our practice and to build memorable friendships. Last week, led by Dr. Katya Chokvalo, we enjoyed ourselves in the power of music. Today, Katya will share with us the topic of finding courage to live fully. Let's welcome Katya. Warm greetings, dear friends. Um, hello to everyone, everywhere. Today we will talk about courage and uh, what it means to us. Often courage is not the word we use daily in our contemplations or discussions with others. When we wake up in the morning, do we ask ourselves, how can, we, uh, can I be courageous today? Or when we sit in the evening meditation, do we meditate on the courageous acts of the day? Giving courage um, its recognition in helping us on our path uh, to awakening is therefore very important. So with this in mind, let us practice our check-in meditation. Closing your eyes in your time and finding a comfortable position. Checking your posture, making sure your back is straight feeling your feet and legs, contacting the surface on which you sit or stand. Relaxing forward, your eyes, your jaw, your entire face. And letting your hands land where they need. And letting go of any tension in the body feeling relaxed. And starting now to connect to your breath as the air enters and exits your body. Noticing your chest and belly rise when you breathe in and fall when you breathe out. Truly connecting to the body as it breathes here and now. And now inviting a memory of your recent or not very recent decision or action that changed or moved the matter of things for the better. And letting that memory emerge in the body. starting to connect to how and where the memory feels in your body. Focusing on your sensations of the memory and putting the memory itself, the thought of it, aside.
and now breathing into those sensations that the act for the betterment left in your body. Letting the body remind you what it already knows about courage. If thoughts are coming in about the memory you brought in or unrelated thoughts, sit, simply letting them pass like leaves on the flowing water, like sounds in the air, like any events that have beginning, middle and the end. And reconnecting with the breath and with the body as it shares its stored memories through emerging feelings. And in your time, moving your fingers and toes and opening your eyes while keeping that sense of the body, knowing what it means to be courageous. So we're exploring today the presence of courage in our lives and the importance of recognizing that first, we all do have it. And second, that we will need to exercise it daily if we were to live fully and truly to who we are. And as we explored in our meditation, we can learn to recognize our own courage through the feelings and sensations stored and remembered by our bodies. Yet many people often do not credit themselves for being courageous or downplay the power of their courage and its effect on themselves and others. That is why stepping on a path of meditation is crucial for developing our courage. Engaging in Buddhist practice, we come to realize that courage is an essential feature of true faith. It takes courage to go first, to act when no one else is, to offer respect and trust when no one else does. In the true spirit of the Buddhist teaching, we set aside the fear that respect may not be returned, that trust may be broken or abused, or that our own com uh, commitments might be attacked or ridiculed. In the venerable singing words, courage does not distinguish between beloved friends and hated foes, but seeks to free all living beings from fear and trepidation and allow them to establish faith in the Dharma. When people have a pure and persistent faith, they become able to apply wondrous wisdom. Therefore, having faith means that despite the possible adverse effects on us, we know that uh, we know that what we do matters. And by acting and thinking positively, we will have an encompassing and corrective effect. We realize that we're engaging in creating a better life through transition from how things are to how we imagine they could be. Courage essentially is the tool for transition of positive movement from contraction, incompletion, and disharmony to expansion, completion, and harmony. In the four insights for finding fulfillment, Venerable Seng Yun tells a couple of stories about courage, including the one of the school teacher in China who saved children from the bus that caught fire and sacrificed her own life. Venerable called her a true bodhisattva and invited the image Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva, the giver of fearlessness, who grants to all living beings the same sense of courageousness and fearlessness. The Latin root of the word courage is core, meaning heart. So it may make sense that giving fearlessness is the application of true love, compassion, and dedication to the Dharma. Whenever we stand firm to our commitments to positive self development, to human flourishing, and to the elevation of suffering, even when our experiences show us that uh, others don't understand or accept it, we do so courageously. Martin Luther King Jr. urged us 
never succumb to the temptation of becoming bitter. As you press for justice, be sure to move with dignity and discipline, using only the instruments of love. At the worst times, such an attitude may seem impossible, yet our most inspiring role models, friends, teachers show us constantly that closing down is not the way. Allowing our heart to respond to life with dignity, openness, and compassion is the essence of courage. Love transcends all fears, and courage is its warrior. Let us now explore the shining facets of this precious stone of courage together. Over to you, Jenny. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. I do hope that you had um, great discussions and if uh, we, we had a fantastic one. And um, if uh, you have anything that you'd like to share, please do so. I think one of the last ones that we came up together was that um, uh, courage is uh, uh, for the community lifting each other up uh, in love uh, and supporting each other. That's also part of courage. And we have uh, from Le Chi in, in our group, yes, uh, it's determination to be persistent and keep practicing to be in, uh, for being courageous. The truth, uh, first noble truth, stands the way. Accept the unchangeable and slowly transform the unchangeable. Close friends around with good source, advice, right view, the support. Wonderful. Priscilla, it takes courage to align what you truly believe in with your actions. It's soon giving up comfort zone. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, transcending those uh, you know, limitations of, of being in comfort zone. Courage, coming to realize joy <laughs> and act uh, on the challenges of our age. I always love the way you put words and, and uh, you, you feel language so much. It just brings so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruce, uh, a courageous act can sometimes disrupt your relationship to friends and family because it breaks some expectations. Yeah, that's the effect and that's the courage sometimes when we do need to act with the uh, true alignment um, in true alignment with our heart. Keep writing, dear friends. And Peter, loving kindness, moving out of their space, politeness, selflessness, and the art of living courageously. Yeah. Words of wisdom, everyone. Thank you so much. And yes, please keep sharing. Um, uh, we will definitely use this for uh, uh, group sharing later on. And now um, I'll pass it on um, uh, over to Jermaine to finish, uh, to conclude our uh, today's uh, session. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, Katja. We really hope the check-in session was helpful to you and we hope you experience the unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. Before we check out today, I would like to draw your attention to two amazing events. The first is that the next and last webinar of Buddhism in the Sea of Islands series will be held next Thursday, which is October 21st at 4 p.m. Sydney time. This month, we look forward to hearing about Buddhism in Atiora, New Zealand, multiple sources and diverse forms conducted by Sally and Mark from the University of Auckland. You are highly welcome to join this event. Another amazing event is that the Ace International Symposium of Humanistic Buddhism will be held from November 6th to 8th. This year's theme will be Humanistic Buddhist Responses to Modern Crisis. Many of our COP members will also contribute their wisdom and compassion to this event. So please feel free to register. And our Euro Sunday check-in session will not be held on that Sunday. As we check out today, let's recite the dedication of merit together to send love and compassion to whoever in need. Oh. 
Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Thank you everyone for joining us. Now we will have our Euro post check-in discussions. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next week at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Thank you.